Click yes. Hello and welcome to another episode of Stuck in a Media Shower, the podcast that takes you on a journey to answer those deep and burning cosmic conundrums. I'm your host, BJ6.9, aka Brenton, and this week I'm here with Liam Burge, the artistic director, self-proclaimed owner, and all-around hairy guy of Launchpad Productions. Hello, hello. That's Liam. It is. What's your nickname for the podcast, Liam? Uh, Meteor Mike. Meteor Mike in the morning. In the morning. Nice. Uh, Today I'll be chatting to Liam a little bit about the history and background of Launchpad, as well as unashamedly plugging some of their upcoming projects. As always, if anyone listening has any thoughts or ideas, topics that you want discussed, make sure to drop a comment and let us know what gets those cogs turning when you're soaping up those knees. You don't know you've got a big problem when I say nipples. (laughs) During a late autumn's eve. So strap yourselves in so we set off on another misadventure amongst the stars to answer those nagging and sometimes rocket-powered shower thoughts. Intro done. Ready to blast off? Ready to blast off. Okay, ready? Okay. (laughs) done this before yeah I'd, i right. like that yeah. so liam yes launchpad mm. what is it uh it is a production company yes yes and why did you call it launchpad well i think through my time in the arts i found that there was one thing that the industry was lacking and mm-hmm. that was a healthy and supportive stepping stone for young artists mm. right i think you know for those already integrated within the scene i think it's incredibly easy to continue to get work yeah uh, for those trying to plug their head into it or you know trying to break that sort of uh upper limits if you would there's nothing really to help them with that leg up mm-hmm. uh, and that is what launchpad is for excellent and do you have a history in in space things mm-hmm. or do you just really like the spaceships uh i mean launchpad you know it, it does have that nice um, sort of imagery with space and stuff like that. Um, uh, when I was four, I think my dream job was to be Buzz Lightyear. Nice. Um, I do remember that vividly when people asked, I want to be Buzz Lightyear. Mm-hmm. That or a fireman. I think they were pretty two big, big aspirations to have as a child. Quite different, those two professions. Yeah. Buzz Lightyear, fireman. Both going headstrong into the beyond and saving lives. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Yeah, so... Uh, I didn't do either of them. <laughs> what did you do instead? Uh, well, I started this. Yes. Yeah, I started... Uh, well, I mean, I did a lot more before that, mm. working for uh, School to Stage. Yeah. They definitely helped sort of um, foster that idea, which is very much needed. Mm-hmm. Um, and with them sort of going down during the, the COVID, early COVID pandemic, I thought that uh, someone needed to fill that gap mm-hmm. in the industry. And that's why we're here. It's where we're here. Yeah. And as you can probably hear by the by the fish tank sound quality, we're in our new office space. We are, and it is incredibly empty. Yes. I think adding in some some things will help it in the next few weeks. What do you mean? We've got a lamp. We've got a lamp. That's a big tip. What else we got? We've got a table. We are currently looking around the office as we speak. What what have we got? We are <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't me. I swear it was this leather chair that I'm sitting in. <laughs> Uh, we've got three beans cans. Yep. What are they for? Uh, so they're uh, eventually going to be making a mess. Making a mess? Yes. Uh, we're going to be doing a little photo shoot for our upcoming season, Love Death Beans. Where's coming, that? Coming to you May 7th at QMC, which stands for Queensland Multicultural Centre. Multimedia Centre? Multicultural Centre. Multicultural Centre. Matt. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. They're sitting there in case an actor... Uh, wants to come and pour some beans over their head. Mm. If anyone out there wants to pour some beans over their head, we've got beans. We've got beans? We've got beans. But we don't have enough heads. No. Well, I mean, we've got three beans. We've got three beans, so we need three heads. Three beans, three heads. One from each cast and one one of you, maybe. (laughs) One of you. (laughs) One of you coming in tonight. Um, So we've talked about Launchpad. We've talked about where the name came from. We've talked about how you want to be a fine man, Sam. Yep. Uh, who are these people that you have involved with you and why did you choose them <laughs> for their many talents? Oh, jeez. Um, Putting you on the spot. Yeah, I am. Uh, so, uh, you know, Elephant of the Room, Brenton, you, uh, you know, very much prevalent within the Launchpad team. Yep. Um, we've I also make the got, podcast. You make the podcast, Big Tick. Um, you know, you've also got Matthew Weffling, who could not be here with us this week. 
Because um, he's... 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 Crook. Studying abroad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we've also got uh, behind the scenes is Nina Seisha. Yep. Uh, as well as Felicity O'Leary. Mm-hmm. Uh, two very vibrant artists in the scene. As well as our photographer, Landon, Landon Smith, uh, who is currently downstairs taking some beautiful, beautiful photos uh, of the second session of casts. Rehearsals are currently running. Mm-hmm. Um, I think working close with all of these people um, through not only school to stage, but with other sort of various art projects around. Um, it's about that willingness to be involved and the supportive and welcoming nature that everyone brings. Mm-hmm. I think that, you know, there are a lot of people that I've worked with who, you know, didn't get that call back because there was always that bit of prejudice or that bit of, you know, they want to kick down more than they want to help push up. Um, and I think as well as amazingly talented creatives, everyone involved in this team is here to support, to nurture and to continuously push up, whether it be for themselves or for the artists that come through us. Mm. It's really nice. It is. You feel good about yourself now. I do. I do. I, I only ask that question because I did want a little bit of validation, I suppose, <laughs> <laughs> live in yeah. front of everybody. So you can't take it back now. No, I can't. Because I'll, I'll save this if you it delete is. every... Copy of the internet. I'll still have it on my hard drive. Well, and you don't know how to edit, so it will go. I'm learning to edit. Thank you very much. It may have taken me three hours to upload the last podcast, but and boy, was it a doozy! Did a good job. I mixed the levels wrong, and if any of you listened to that one, you might not be listening to this one because I probably blasted your ears off. You live and you learn. You live and you learn. Live and you learn. Live and you learn. So, next topic. I've got them written down on the sheet. Perfect. You come organized. I do. Every week, my (laughs) co-host is a little bit different. He likes to wing it. Oh, the renegade. Mm, Getting a little bit of background info, a little bit of gloss. Um, Things coming up. So we've got this, we've got a season going out, Mm -hmm. Love, Death and Beans. Yes. QMC. Yes. Multicultural. Cultural Centre. Did you hear that, Matt? (laughs) I'm going to keep coming back to this because you nearly... Oh. Blasted us down the wrong hole, but um, further on this year going forward, what are your what are your dreams? What are your aspirations? What do you what do you want to get? Well, when it comes to performances, I think um, QMC is a beautiful, beautiful space. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's incredibly important for all of us to start getting back out there in the scene and putting on theatre. I think we can only sort of. Um, trying to find the right words it isn't cowering in the shadow of this pandemic yeah uh you know we just need to start taking those risks and getting out there again Mm. putting on shows uh and qmc have been fantastic in facilitating that so i'm hoping uh to get another season sort of running second half of the year i want to say sort of that september october sort of time Mm -hmm. would be nice um i have a few schools lined up to do some internal programs uh fenny grove winham state high um, I'm trying to get into uh, contact with McGregor. If anyone's yep. listening from McGregor, please tell Karen to call me again. <laughs> yeah. That'd be nice. Um, as well as setting up some more um, sort of club based things around the office. Um, we're currently toying with the idea of having a writer's club, mm-hmm. uh, sharing each other's stories, helping, um, you know, always progressing through and changing a bit and learning about characters and devising. I want to do some film workshops, some acting workshops, just to get, you know, everyone set up to be the best they could possibly be. Mm. Um, whatever that means coming into this year, I think I'll take it as I see it. Uh, we, we are here to serve, essentially. So if, if you think there's a gap, if you need things done, send us a message. We can make it happen. Mm. Did you hear that? Send us a message, please. Please. <laughs> please. Please. We're very lonely people. <laughs> it's a big office. It's a big office. There's not a lot in here. It's quite scary. It's on the second floor. It's in Tenerife. Beautiful aircon. Beautiful aircon. It's nice. It is. It's a nice change. It is. It's a very nice change. Mm. But we've talked, we've talked about the professional there now. Now, I want, I want to let your hair down a little bit. I want, to, I, want to, I want to lift up the mask. I'm moving in a chair because I've got a I've got a wheelie chair. Everything's Every... moved to the other side of their speakers. Yes. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, you can. But we're gonna we're gonna lift the mask. And what makes Liam tick? Where did you come from, Mister Burge? 
and why did you choose to get into into what many consider a dying art form in mm. theatre? What what pushes you to keep wanting to make live performance? Good question. So I think um, going to high school at Fender Grove State High mm -hmm. um, is essentially a music based, like a music music excellence school. Yeah, um, is what they're trade as. But they also have a really wide range of art projects that they run through their school, be it internal, external, uh, with several different uh, theatre companies around Brisbane. I was really fortunate enough to sort of grow my skills and my passion for performing in such a supportive environment there with the opportunities to reach out and those connections. Um, you know, meeting Alexander Clark, uh, who used to run the school stage, mm -hmm. doing a few shows with him, getting that essence of passion and um, just willingness to always strive forward from him definitely sort of inspired me to continue on doing that. Uh, I would beg to differ that theatre is a dying art. Mm -hmm. I think um, performance is everywhere in our lives. I think be it 50 bucks on a stage at a QPAC or street art that you find in Queen Street Mall, I think it's incredibly important to our society that we are still having people out there creating new and inspiring works, whether it be a you know a stage production that has taken years of like you know building and rehearsing and finally being put on stage or it is a fashion show in the metaverse which just um happened the other day they had this like full designer fashion show in the metaverse that you had to buy tickets for and go um i think it's accessibility is the biggest key are we willing to go out and watch a show or how do we bring that into their lives without them having to go and find it mm. so yeah i don't think the industry is dying i definitely think the um the stage theater side is more and more difficult mm -hmm. uh, it's just about adjusting people's sort of expectations and attitudes around what it means to have live performance mm. take a sitcom Yep. For example, right? Sitcoms are still filmed in front of a live audience. Um, it's important for those actors to have that um, sort of give response, that give and take from the audience, uh, call and response. That's what fuels the actor's drive, mm. is that reaction from the audience. Um, Ian McKellen talks about The Hobbits, the Hobbit movies that he did, uh, only doing it in green screen, and he cried. Right, because he was all alone in this, you know, technologically advanced set, and it was just stunning when it came in post. But he wasn't working with people, and I think that's the most important part of live performance is that connection. Hmm. And you're not you you haven't gone to uni. No, you, you haven't you haven't studied any of this sort of stuff. So what is it that um, drives your work? Like what 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 inspires you? And what would you what would you say is your your niche or your theme? Because I've seen a lot of your shows, mm. and one of the things I really enjoy about a Liam Bird show is you often take these um, everyday objects like a fridge, like a washing machine, any other ones that you can remember. Wheelie bin was one of them. Wheelie bin, door. very very simple everyday objects, and you use that as as a portal or a transporting device. Where uh, you take them from the from a, from an everyday world into a world of, of fantasy. What? Why? Why those objects? I think that I watch the news every morning. Okay. I love it with my peanut butter toast. Which news? Uh, ABC Twenty Four. Yeah. Yeah. I love those guys. I think they're a little bit better than Sunrise or mm -hmm. Today Now. You know those ABC Twenty Four. Shout out to them. Um, it can get incredibly depressing. Mm -hmm. The world is on a downhill slope in every way you look at it. Everything, yep. everything is just going into the bin. Um, and that can get pretty overwhelming and pretty depressing very, very quickly. Mm. And I don't know about everyone else listening, but if I'm bombarded with this, all of this negativity that goes on my shoulders, mm -hmm. I'm going to stop listening. It's all too much. You know what? I'm just going to go out. I'm going to play 
I'm going to play a game, I'm going to do something else. I don't want to know about it because it's all too hard. It's all too overwhelming. So what I like to do is I like to find the joy in the mundane, Mm -hmm. sort of taking that child's imagination that we all have still in us and transport the viewers into that world of fantasy, you know, um, instead of a stick, it's a lightsaber. However, you're still talking about those higher issues. So, you know, take um, Just Chill with the fridge. Yeah, sure, we're in an adventure from the crisper to the freezer in a fridge with all the fridge fairies. Yeah. But, you know, the underlying nuances and the tones is still global warming and it's still allegories throughout that tells the story without it being preachy. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important in all forms of text, film, any form of literature is it doesn't get preachy because people just zone out. Yeah. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to deal with it. They almost feel like it's their fault. Uh, What I want to achieve is to just a gentle reminder that Mm. we can all do our part. It's all not too scary if we just change our way of looking at it. Mm Mm-hmm. And is there a favorite project that you've worked on or or a, a most challenging pro, uh, thing or, or something that if you got the chance to do it all again, you would want to go back and give it a second sort of go? I mean, I definitely have my favorites. Yeah. Um, whether or not they are my favorites for the story that I made mm-hmm. or the time that I spent with my cast creating that, I, I, I'm not sure. I haven't gotten that in my head yet. You know, um, Pure Garbage mm. was a fantastic one. Um, it was modelled sort of like Mad Max. Okay. But if Mad Max, instead of motorbikes, it was wheelie bins. Nice. Yeah. Um, that was a QPAC. That was a dream come true for me. It was a stellar cast that performed that show. And, you know, I'm not sure if that's a accumulation of everything all coming together. Um, I'm not sure. But, I mean challenging you could think of harmony when we did that back in 20 i want to say 18 off the top of my head yeah i want to say that you know 120 actors in an uh, interactive space all with different quest lines all with different things full set build that hannah hawker and i had to do i think that was the most challenging and i would love to do that with a spielberg budget yeah i think that would be super super cool considering i did that for free Mm-hmm. Shout out to my palette guy. Um, Does I think, he have a name? Uh, he did. He did? He did in 2018. <laughs> but not anymore. No, no, I didn't need palettes after that show. The palette guy. Palette guy. This is for Actually, you, palette guy. Uh, as we talk, I'll find him in my contacts. I think I've still got him. Um, part of it, though, is, you know, is do you want to redo? Mm. Do you want to redo a show? Or do you want to push on to something next? Do you yeah. want to... Um, you know, always keep on, you know, maybe rehashing the theme. Mm. But I love Shakespeare. Okay. I think, I think he, you know, his work, I absolutely love it. Um, is it done too much? I think so. Mm. I think we've heard that. Yeah, it, it does still translate 500 years on. Brilliant. Write a new thing. <laughs> like, write something that is way more relevant to these times and put your mark on it. And become the next Shakespeare in 500 years to come. Mm. So uh, his name was Grant, by the way. Grant the Palette Guy. Grant the Palette Guy. Do you want his number? Let's not <laughs> hand out his number. Yeah, let's not hand out his number. Give him a call. Get him on the line. Uh, this is a recorded podcast, so it'll, <laughs> it'll be a bit awkward. Very first week of doing this, I shouted out Back Dock Arts for a, for a lovely thing that they were doing for the floods, where they were bringing together a bunch of different artworks from people all over the country. And I shouted out, you know, the fact that you could buy tickets this weekend. Oh. And um, by the time this podcast had gone out, it was next weekend. So I don't know how many people tried to buy tickets. I re- if, if you tried to buy a ticket and you weren't able to, can you please comment on this podcast and let me know? <laughs> because I, <laughs> I'm really sorry, but it also is a little bit funny. And I want to know how much reach <laughs> oh, we've currently got while we're still small and before we take over the world. Yeah. Um, but moving away, moving away from from the business. Yes. Do you have any weird phobias that we should be aware of? Uh, yes. Yeah, I do. Um, two. Do any of them have anything to do with any of these 
fridges, washing machines. No, I don't like people touching my belly button. Specifically belly button? Specifically. Is um, there a story there? Uh, Did somebody touch your belly button? No, I'm always afraid it's going to like rip open. Oh. And my guts are just going to go... <laughs> right? Uh, you've seen The Matrix? I've seen the first one, not the second or third. First one's fine. Yeah. Sorry to anyone who hasn't seen The Matrix. Uh, but there's this like, little robotic bug who mm. gets in Neo no. through his belly button. <laughs> <laughs> No, nope. they give you nightmares. Yeah, it does. It makes me curl up. Don't mm. like it. And Amy does it just for fun. She goes, mm. oh, and it just, I hate it. I really do. Mm. It makes me cry at night. So that's one phobia. Yep. What's the second one? Really, really deep water. Deep water. Yeah. What about deep water? I don't know. Like a whale's gonna come up and just go and just chomp you a up. A whale. Yeah. Because they could. I know they don't. Yeah. Right. But they could. They could at yeah. any point. Just at any chomp point. You. Like. Sharks are okay to be afraid of, right? They yeah. chomp you up in bits. They do. You know what I mean? They go chomp, 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 chomp. Whale, bang. Geppetto from Pinocchio, living in there for years. Do you still go to the beach? Or you oh, yeah, I love the guy? beach. Do you go swimming in the beach? 100%, unless there's blue bottles. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. Blue bottles are nasty things. Yeah. One blue bottle, up on the sand. Have you ever been stung by a blue bottle? Yeah. It was oh, awful. I was six, so. <laughs> Did your dad piss on you? Uh, no, they poured um, alcohol down my hand. And did you? Did it help? I mean, like at that point, a kiss on the forehead and a tap better. Everything helped. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to do it again. Did you want to get stung by another blue bottle? No, nah, not gonna do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Actually, wasn't even swimming. So. Oh, did yeah. someone throw it at you? Well, my hand was out the window of the car. <laughs> And so you weren't got, even on the beach. No, well, yeah, we're on the beach, driving on the beach. Oh, right? okay. And the it was in the sand, and the tire flicked it up, and it went and wrapped oh. around my hand. And six year old little Amy wasn't having a good time. That's nasty. Yeah, it was. You weren't even on the beach. No. You're in the car. Yeah. And it flung up like a like one of those mines you see in the war movies. Yeah. Where it... Got me. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Like see, I am also afraid of deep water. I've got a deep fear of being eaten by a shark one day. And I have the sense not to go in the water. <laughs> because it is my it is my firm opinion that the day I die will be the day that I go to the beach with friends or family or somebody. And there'll always be that one really helpful person who's like, why won't you come in the water, Brenton? Uh, I'm like, well, because I'm going to get eaten by a shark. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, don't worry, yeah. I'll take you out. I'll be with you. It'll be fine. <laughs> what is that person going to do when a great big motherfucking shark comes up? And it's their fault. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to be looking it in the face and it's going to be like, so what you're doing here? And I'm going to be like, look, I have no reason to be here. Greg, <laughs> good old Greg. Grant. Said, Good old Grant said he'd be watching me. He's currently on the sand. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the shark's going to be like, well, you realise I've got to take a chunk out of your leg now. Yeah, it's, pro- it's procedure. Yeah, procedure, yeah. and it will happen, and I'll, and I'll die mm-hmm. right then and there. Mm-hmm. Because Grant said he'd look after me. Yeah. And boy, did he. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. that looks about like we're coming up to the 20-minute 20, 20 mark. Don't you dare, Landon. Landon. Don't you dare come in here right now. This is podcast only zone. Come in here. Come, come in here. here. Get, come here. Get, on, get on the podcast. Yeah. It's a quiet time with Landon. Come on, say something. Hello. <laughs> no, no, no. Come back, come back, come back. 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 Come back, as Liam said earlier. You said get deep and the first thing is being left alone, so... Oh, oh. yeah. Oh, buddy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you said deep and I went there. <laughs> we'll be here for you. Yeah. Well, that sort of Technically, company. it's the same as Brenton's. What was yours? Uh, I... Being left alone and being eaten by a shark. Yeah. And Liam is just afraid of the whales coming up and grabbing him. Getting in my belly button. So it's Getting all ocean related. Mine is just... Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Sadness. <laughs> Sadness. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> That's fair. Well, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Stuck in a Media Shower. This has been Liam. Thank you. This has been Landon. Cool. Landon, what, what would your what would your um your mic name be? We've got we've got what was your name? Meteor Mike. We got Meteor Mike in the morning. Meteor Mike in the morning. Yeah. Um, What's your DJ name? Come on, it's live.
Mr. Fiddlesticks. Mr. Fiddlesticks. Mr. Fiddlesticks. Oh, mm-hmm. well, you know. Nitty Mark, Mr. Fiddlesticks, BJ639. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.